This episode is brought to you by Cox Home Life. Cox helps make your home smarter. And now you can pull up your home life cameras on your TV with your Contour voice remote and some simple voice commands. To learn more, visit cox.com slash this is home. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. The metaverse has been on the top of minds and conversations of most people in the marketing space in the last few months. Ever since Mark Zuckerberg and Meta, nay, Facebook, went all in on VR to inflate stock prices because they had Oculus headsets to sell now, this seemingly new virtual world as a consumer and business reality has produced an explosion. Unfortunately, the explosion has been one of consultants and experts and specialty agencies telling brands and influencers that if they're not in the metaverse, they're yesterday's news. At slow your roll there, thought leader wannabes. The metaverse is neat, but it's not for everybody or every brand. And there's still a lot of gap closing that needs to happen between consumer engagement there and brands solving the problem of how to drive that engagement. Last month, I dedicated most of my monthly email newsletter to sharing my honest thoughts on the metaverse and how brands, consumers, and influencers can use it. The piece was so well-received, one of my fellow thinkers in the space, Ted Rubin, used my rant as his email newsletter last week. It was the first newsletter in a long time that I produced that earned more than a couple of replies from subscribers, too. More than a dozen people reached out to say how excited they were to read it and how refreshing it was to have a realistic perspective on this new world to chew on. Today on Winfluence, I'm going to share much of that piece with you. I put it through the filter of it being used as a podcast script and tried to underline the influencer marketing implications a bit, so it's a little different than the original. But I'm going to give you my honest opinion of the metaverse and how we can and should prioritize its use in today's commentary. Before I do, we've been hearing directly from Pete Kennedy lately from Tagger. He's the founder and president of that influencer marketing platform, and they are the presenting sponsor of this podcast. Tagger just released a new feature called Signals, which we've learned is a very specific type of social listening, primarily to influencers, of course, and Signals helps you build your brand strategies in this realm. Pete actually jumped in during our conversation and talked specifically about how agencies can use Signals. It's also an amazing new business tool if you are an agency, right? So if you're an agency and you're out there pitching new business all the time, now you can create a signals report looking at specific um, brands that you're pitching or their competitors to understand what is their strategy, what influencers have they hired, what content has resonated within those strategies, uh, who are the people ingesting all of this content, um, you know, how many impressions are they delivering in market every month? So it's kind of endless in terms of the amount of data that you can visualize. Uh, and it's also a really amazing visualization tool. We, we have all these different components where you can pull any query you want and then visualize it in multiple different ways. Thanks to Pete and to Tagger for the great product and for helping bring this podcast to you each week. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, even if it's just to check out the new Signals feature, just visit jason.online slash Tagger today. That's jason.online slash Tagger. The real and raw truth of the metaverse for brands and influencers. That's next on Winfluence. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. The Metaverse. What does it mean? Where is it? Should my brand be involved there? Should I, as an influencer or content creator, 
claim my stake of decentral land or some other such virtual world? Last month in my email newsletter, which you can and should subscribe to at jasonfalls.com, by the way, I ripped off the Band-Aid and got raw about the metaverse. There was such a resounding response of approval for my thoughts, I wanted to share them with you here. So for you NFT nutters and virtual reality nerds, buckle up. This might sting. I just think the metaverse is like a casino. It looks amazing and shiny from the outside, but once you're there, you realize you can't hear anything. It smells like cigarette smoke, and 75% of the people you run into are just creepy. You've heard tell of a guy who got lucky and won $150,000 on a slot machine, but most people leave sad, or at least underwhelmed. Don't get me wrong, I still go to the casino now and then when I want to pass some time, waste a little money, and have a conversation with someone I'm convinced is a hooker, but it's not my new jam. For some, it will be. I have a friend who moved to Vegas out of college and has found a nice life bartending, blackjack dealing, and taking whatever cocktail waitress he suckers into thinking he's loaded that week to see Celine Dion. And yes, an occasional douchebag will come along and make a killing there doing something we all wish we could do too. But I'm not going to recommend that influencers and brands relocate to the Strip and leave their lives behind either. Keep in mind, I'm almost 50. I almost stopped playing video games when 3D graphics turned NHL 96, which I dominated, into NHL 97, which saw me lose my first game 11 to nothing. If anyone is apt to be a cranky old bastard about the alleged replacement for social media, it's me. But you know that or you wouldn't be listening, right? So here's more meat to this honest take on all this metaverse nonsense. There are some opportunities there for brands and influencers, but not more than, say, Tuesday nights at the Mandalay Bay. The most important thing for you to remember is the metaverse is all about experiences. If these new websites, apps, and platforms that fall under the category of metaverse didn't provide new and interesting experiences, the term would be left in Terry Pratchett novels. Oh, wait, that's multiverse. Oh, well, you, you know where I'm going. The two types of experiences, from my perspective, are virtual reality ones and then the ones I qualify as reality only virtual. Virtual reality ones are those that are fake creations that pass as a new reality because you can experience them in immersive three dimensional form via VR headsets like the Oculus Quest 2, which I own. These are worlds like Second Life, which many of us remember from the three weeks it was the next big thing in 2007. And not to foil my sarcasm, but it is still an active, vibrant virtual world with over 900,000 active users. Other virtual worlds I've played with include the Meta Facebook Oculus's Horizon Worlds, Decentraland, VTime XR, EngageVR.io, and Spatial.io. And here's a big insider tip for those of you who have not ventured into the metaverse. You can go log into all of them on a web browser and experience the whole thing without the need for a VR headset. Minus Horizon Worlds, because the Zuckerbergs of the world want to keep you out and make you buy the headsets. Now, yes, the headset delivers an experience that is unlike anything you've seen before, but you'll get the point and be able to play there without dropping $300 on today's version of a viewfinder. Honestly, these virtual worlds are cool to experience. I've even connected with a few new people and had a little 3D coffee-type chat, but they were no more or less interesting than the last three or four conversations I had with people at the roulette table. There are a lot of NFT galleries to walk through in the metaverse. I'll have more on those in a moment. There are virtual events ranging from educational talks to virtual concerts. The experiences are neat, but the content is not inherently different than attending a webinar or watching a YouTube video with friends. And then there are reality-only virtual experiences. These are real things you can experience in life. Only the 360-degree virtual headset allows you to experience them virtually. YouTube has a library of 360-degree experience videos. Load those up on your YouTube VR app in your Oculus, and you can skydive, uh, ride the, the Beast, a roller coaster at Kings Island in Cincinnati. You can tour Paris or just about any major city in the world. You can experience the northern lights from Norway, stand on the African plain surrounded by lions, take a helicopter ride around the Matterhorn, and so on. 
You can even experience the reality only virtual of things you probably can't realistically do in real life, like walk around Mars. Thanks, Rover. I can also confirm just from an incognito browser search, not firsthand experience, there are reality only virtual experiences for many things I wouldn't talk about on my podcast, too. What happens on your Oculus stays on your Oculus. Okay, now to NFTs. Do they confuse you? If you said no, you're lying. Just the term fungible is enough to give you a headache trying to decipher. Something that is fungible can be changed or traded for something else. So a non-fungible token, NFT, is something that can't be traded for something else. Yet what do you do with NFTs? You trade them. What nerds create for us to figure out sometimes is irritating. It turns out the non-changeable part is simply the ledger of who owns the given virtual item, what rights they have to it, and so on. Once they sell it, the ledger notes that permanently, but keeps the original information too. So think of it like being able to buy a house or a car and immediately know everyone who has ever owned it before, how much they sold it for, all of the improvements and changes they did to it, how much those cost, and so on. But then add to the ledger the fact that the person who built the house can legally bake in a requirement that he or she gets a 2% share of any future sale of that house. So for anyone who creates intellectual property, digital art, designs, etc., this is a godsend, both legally and financially. And if Adele does a two-week engagement at the Mirage, I'll go just to hear her sing live. But just because you can sing doesn't mean you should. Lots of people are building NFTs and selling or trading them. The only real value they have is that they are NFTs. Once the market realizes the art they bought is shitty and no one else really wants it, they'll realize they took the casino's free show tickets and now have to sit through a William Shebangs hung impersonator. I also anticipate the IRS is going to have something to say on NFTs along the way. I just hope my bleeding edge friends have bleeding edge tax attorneys. And that brings me to the final point on the metaverse. Many places you'll play in the virtual world operate a lot like a video game. In fact, some of them are called games in their descriptions, even though there are no scores or points or challenges or winners. These games often have their own currencies for you to advance or just hang around not bored in them. So in order to have a virtual house, you'll buy a certain amount of game tokens and pay for virtual things to make your virtual world virtually kick ass. But now the currency in these games isn't just graphical gold coins or renewable red hearts that represent lives for your character. They are cryptocurrencies themselves. The virtual world you're in might use Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of the dozens of others. So your game tokens are actually exchangeable for real currency or at least currency that can, in a few steps, be converted into real-world money. If you sell 100 NFTs in Decentraland for $100 in mana, which is a digital currency, you have $10,000 of income. Do you think the IRS or any government's tax bureau gives a damn where you keep it? Or even what you call the individual base denomination? Mana equals dollars, which equals the tax man taking his share. Yes, cryptocurrency is supposed to be decentralized and not subject to the fees or influences of governments or banks. But income is income, and in the government's eyes, keeping the equivalent of $100 in mana in your Decentraland account so it doesn't show up in your official crypto wallet at tax time probably falls into the neighborhood of evasion. Now, what does this all mean for influencers and brands? As we began today's journey, I told you the important thing is that the metaverse is predicated on experiences. Not unlike Las Vegas, in order to keep people interested and engaged, you have to continually reinvent the experience. Virtual worlds and content that is more reality-only virtual are a new palette for creators and brands. Right now, the gatekeepers are big software development companies that have invested significant time and resources to create virtual worlds and experiences. The next step in the evolution of the metaverse is for creators and brands to either add to them or create new ones. 
if I'm a content creator in 2022, I'm using virtual worlds to create more immersive experiences with my audience. That could be in the form of weekly virtual hangouts in a private space. It could be that I perform something in a public venue and invite everyone just to witness it. We can move from having several thousand usernames whose accounts give my content permission to appear in their news feeds to immersive personal experiences where I interact with the people behind those usernames more frequently. No travel expenses, no need for masks or vaccinations. And as I build those new experiences, I'm going to create ways for brand partners to enhance them in relevant ways. So David Kogan, the unlocker on social channels, might host a virtual tech talk with his fans, but invite the lead product person from Samsung to answer questions about the latest Galaxy model. An experience like that puts the brand front and center to David's audience, but in a highly relevant and interesting way. And I work with David on a client project, so I know he wouldn't muck it up by just having the Samsung person read off an ad during the event. If I'm a brand approaching the metaverse, I'm going to look for ways like that to be intimately engaged with consumers. That will be the ultimate payoff. But I'm also going to do what brands do. I'm going to set up a virtual home with relevant reasons for consumers to visit me there. Even if it's just for the easy publicity of being first in my category for now, it's probably worth it. I'm also going to find places to advertise where the message will be seen or heard by virtual visitors there in as contextually relevant ways as possible. There will be a lot of clumsy for brands. I visited a virtual gallery of Chinese zodiac signs in Spatial.io last week. It was presented by McDonald's. I appreciate that, but I don't understand the connection. It didn't make me want to go order french fries, though it did reinforce a positive association with the brand. I'm also going to be very thoughtful about how much time and energy I spend in the metaverse versus the other places I connect with people. The reason Second Life didn't turn out to be the second coming was it was really built for the 1% of the one percenters. The wealthy and the technorati were the only people who could afford the bandwidth to make the experience worthwhile. Oculus headsets aren't cheap. Good enough internet is still not available to everyone everywhere. Yes, we've closed the gap and virtual worlds have a better chance of being and staying successful now. But in the end, I'm placing the smart bet. Not everyone will like hanging out with the cigarette smoke and the creepy people. Okay, folks, I want to hear your reaction, your criticisms, your angry screaming rants, or any other feedback. Send it via email or just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode. Have a question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hey, it's Seth from Entrepreneurs Enigma here on the Marketing Podcast Network. I know you're enjoying your current show, so I won't keep you too long. I just wanted to tell you about my show. Every week, I interview entrepreneurs from all types of industries about their entrepreneurial journey. No two journeys are the same, and my goal is to highlight the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur from a wide variety of perspectives. Learn more and subscribe at entrepreneursenigma.com. See you there. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.